the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His grace and His blessing now and ever into the ages of all ages. Amen. During the blessed month of Kiev, we went through the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first two chapters, speaking about the preparation of the Nativity of our Lord and the birth also of St. John the Baptist. And after the birth and during the Feast of Nativity, the Church switches for the next week primarily to the Gospel of St. Matthew because that Gospel speaks more clearly about what happens in, time, in the time of the birth and afterwards until the Lord returns uh, back from the blessed land of Egypt. And this gospel reading for the first Sunday of the blessed month of Tuba, as we heard, is dedicated for the 144,000 of the young infants, two years and, and younger, who were martyred and, and gave their lives because of uh, after the birth of the Lord and who are uh, mentioned in the book of Revelation. There are many lessons from this gospel of St. Matthew, uh, the second chapter. But <clears throat> uh, I want to just speak about two of them. The first one, which was the lesson that we learned from the Lord Jesus Christ in facing affliction. And the second one that we learned from uh, the, the work of, uh, of us and the blessing that comes in the time of affliction. The first one, which is how uh, they have a, a law that is said in much of the animal kingdom, where sometimes they fight and sometimes there's flight. And this happens in, in, we see what happens to the Lord Jesus Christ with this choice to flee that was, that was commanded uh, by the angel to St. Joseph to leave into the land of Egypt. <clears throat> there are some times that we are given a responsibility to confront evil and to speak against evil and to work against what is wrong, whether it, it, there's no limitation of age in this regard. There are some times that God calls us to be a witness and an advocate for the truth. This is what he did when he called Esther. This is what he did when he called Moses. This is what he, the reason for he sent the apostles into a very difficult land. And he said, I send you out as lambs among wolves. But your job to preach the gospel and to do the work that I call you to do. To do the work of evangelist. <clears throat> and this responsibility, as God even says, that it is because when we're given this responsibility, there is no option to escape. And when St. Peter tried at the end, he was escaping his martyrdom, the Lord told him uh, that if you do not go, I will go to the cross, as we have in the famous story uh, attributed to him afterwards. So the work of, of fighting and of preaching uh, the gospel, this was a call and a special message for us, as with David and Goliath, as uh, with many of the other faithful, that th it was their work, their work and call to, to act and to work against others. But in this gospel, we see a different picture. We see the Lord that is fleeing into the land of Egypt. And there are some times that it is more uh, blessed and more profitable for us to postpone confrontation where there is, needs to be a little bit more time in reflection and more time in peace. Yesterday we commemorated, the church commemorated the Apostle St. John. And in his final days, when he was uh, in Ephesus in preaching, he spent uh, many months uh, there. And in the first period of time, uh, his apostle was expecting him to preach. But instead, they were working in the mines, a very difficult job that even affected his health. And his disciple at one point asked him, he said, we are here to preach. How come we are working and laboring like the others? Uh, there should be. Uh, so St. John told him, when the Lord calls, and when the Lord is the appointed time, it shall take place. And there's a, a long story eventually in one day. And one day he was able to bring most of the city of Ephesus by the grace of God uh, to the knowledge of Christ. But th this was a period of time 
where Ethan the Lord spent in Egypt for about three years. And each day it was full of suffering. There was no uh, uh, place that would always welcome them. They had no shelter. They had not much abundant food. They had no one to support them. And uh, the many of the legends that were written in the time uh, afterwards of the Holy Family in Egypt, although not included in the Gospel, they describe a great period of suffering and hardship. Um, but at the same time, that the blessing that the, the land of Egypt received, as mentioned here, is that in every place that they were and that they were suffering, that it became a source of blessing not just for the people back then, but even until now. Many times when there's an apparition of the Holy Virgin, it was because it was in a location and a place that the Holy Family had visited 2,000 years ago that we were not aware of. And this teaches us a very important lesson, that many times when we are being afflicted, when we are suffering, when we are alone, when it is very dark, that this is a, can be a preparation for blessing. Not all suffering is meant in, in the same way, but much of the suffering, if we understand it, and if uh, we persevere, is uh, for this a greater work to happen after the time that we see. <clears throat> there are also some times when we are confronting someone that there needs to be a time of silence. As St. Paul says, after the first and second admonition to reject a divisive man, meaning that we may try to speak the truth and try to explain something to someone once or twice, but after a while, St. Paul says, don't waste your time. But he says, shouldn't everyone hear the gospel? He said, yes. But if you notice in this gospel, Herod, they didn't try to negotiate with him. They didn't try to give him a sermon. He was already told that the king of Jews was to be born, and he sent the Magi to, to search for him. But his desire was not for truth. And so that's why there was no further message sent <clears throat> to him. There's also sometimes when we uh, are uh, under a superior or an elder that uh, the the epistle of, of St. Paul to the Hebrews, as well as St. Peter, tells us that usually we, we must be submissive to our rulers, to those who are in authority, as much as possible, as long as those instructions are not against the commandment of God. Just like St. Maurice and the Theban Legion, when they were called to, to, to uh, the battle, that they were faithful and obedient. But when they were asked to offer incense to the idols, they said, this we cannot accept. Because before we accepted your commandment, we, we uh, have commandment from our greater king of kings. And because one, uh, one can be, uh, is not consistent with the commandment of the first, then we must not obey. This type of discussion is not a matter of weakness, but it is a matter of great strength, N not of uh, just respect only, but one of faithfulness to the scripture. And, so, and in these times when uh, we, we believe that the Lord is calling us to be faithful and obedient, even there's many, uh, when the uh, apostle was speaking, there's many who ask us to do things that are not against the commandment, but maybe not in a nice way, not in a kind way, or not, we don't see any benefit for it. Sometimes we'll have many people ruling over us with aggression and difficulty. The scripture teaches us how that we are faithful and obedient to this, that not everyone that to, to cause, to be a cause for fight. <clears throat> also that in the midst of difficulty, that God prepares a route and when it's time to escape or time that God prepares that route. And we learn this message, this uh, lesson from the Israelites. 
because in the day of the crossing of the Red Sea, as some of you may have seen, that God had prepared this path for them to follow in the time of the creation. Because uh, to reach from one end to the other end of the Red Sea, it was uh, a very large uh, cavity. And so there is a smooth path that was planned in the end to the left and to the right, there's uh, like a great uh, ditch. And because of that, that's why the wa waves, when they went up, they were congealed in the heart of the sea. All of this was for that one day that, that they were to cross the Red Sea. And in the time when the Lord was fleeing to Egypt, there was also the path that was uh, planned or directed by them. And that path that we benefit from today when anyone goes to visit in Egypt, they'll say, oh, the Holy Family went here, the Holy Family went there. And you will find that there, there are special places for us accounted because of that suffering. And in our life, we will have much suffering. Some people go through a certain periods of suffering, long or short whether from sickness, whether problem at work, problem at school, problem uh, with whatever it may be. And God has uh, to mark each of those times, each of those places. Because in the midst of the difficulty, that God is working with us. And for much of that time, we don't see or understand, or even sometimes we don't like to accept what is that suffering. But God uses it for the good. As Joseph said, that you meant it for evil to his brothers, but God meant it for good. And God was able to transform and to work what the other people were doing against him for his glory and for his greatness. That's why when we remember Joseph, we remember how much he suffered, but also how much he was blessed. When we think of Job, we see all of his sufferings, but at the same time we see that God counted it for him for righteousness. When we see for the Israelites how they spent for 40 years in the wilderness, or for many of the saints, that there is a time of struggle. But God take, moves us from that period of struggle to the time of glory, to the time of blessing. Sometimes it takes a, a little while, and sometimes it takes many years for us even to understand what is happening. We want the answers now. But if you look at the gospel, what happens in the gospel of St. Matthew chapter 2, for the 144,000, for all of their families, who are asked, why would God allow this? That all of these children should, should uh, have their lives on earth end. And in the book of Revelation, they're still asking God, when will this vengeance take place? And the Lord is coming, down, this is, it will happen. It will happen. But the answer that we found, even today, if you go to this village, not far from Bethlehem, was where Rachel's tomb was. And Rachel was buried there, and that's where also the 144,000, that's why this prophecy was mentioned, that she is weeping for her children, not just her own children, but all of these 144, which were the children that were linked with the Lord. When If you go from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, you will have to pass by Rachel's tomb. And even till this day, the Jews and the Christians, they remember the tomb of Rachel. Because to go from the birth to the heavenly kingdom, from our life, in the middle is some suffering. And in the middle is Rachel weeping. But God, because he is faithful, he will uh, give each one according to, to uh, his work and her offering. And what God has made us patient through suffering that he is waiting to glorify, to bless, and to lead us to his heavenly kingdom. May the Lord help us to be his faithful children. Glory be to him now and ever into the ages of all ages. Amen.